Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Uh, Scott sent me in a couple of reels that were flea market finds. We're going to call this one an education. There's not much you're going to be able to service this reel, but uh, we'll learn from it. We have two broken stud uh, mounts that hold the reel seat on, but it's still being held on. These are screw posts, that's why they're being held in. They screw into the side plate here, so it's holding the side plate. It doesn't run very well. It has a, a pretty much a broken bridge. You can see how the handle just wobbles. That gear post is just floating in there. But hey, it's an old reel. It's pre-World War II. It's a Montague. It's called the Montague Favorite. Montague reels were made up in Massachusetts. They had an on and off relationship with Ocean City. And uh, eventually Ocean City did acquire them. Montague was a rod maker first and then uh, uh, went into the fishing reel business as well. And you can see we have a twisted case. We have a case that's got an opening on the bottom here when you look at the spool, but closed on the top, which means the frame is bent. And it's likely whatever the trauma was that caused these screws to split also caused that frame to twist. So you got a lot of issues here that say you're never gonna take this real fishing again, but if you, uh, if you wanna put it on a shelf and uh, show an example of a pre-World War II real, that's uh, something you can do with this. Well, let's just open it up. We'll give you a bird's eye view from the inside on uh, what, uh, what this reel is all about. And uh, we'll learn from it. I call these tuition reels. And uh, you learn from them for the price that you pay. There's four exterior screws. We're going to go ahead and take those apart. And again, these side crossbars here are screwed into the other case. So if you needed to remove that cross post, uh, you would simply unscrew it and uh, go from there. Well, we're going to take the four out. While I do that, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do like the art of reel repair, if you like learning about fishing reels, I enjoy learning about them. That's one of the reasons I kind of got started on this. And uh, folks say, what do you, how come you know all this stuff about reels? I don't know all the stuff. But what I do know, it's because of a curiosity. And, uh, well, just some basic research. And uh, one of the best places you can find research is by, well, viewing videos like these. So if you, uh, if you like to see these types of things, please subscribe. If you do subscribe, please use that notification button. That'll let you know when I'm posting. And you'll be able to see which reels I'm working on. And, well, you can make a determination as to whether that's something you'd like to learn more about. The whole idea behind Second Chance Tackle is keep reels fishing and, uh, well, teach you how to do it yourself. Well, I said four, I made a mistake. There's five side plate screws that hold this on. And, uh, well, we should be able to remove that now. You can see this may have actually been in the deep blue sea. There's a lot of things going on here, mostly rust and corrosion. And uh, let's see if we can't get the spool out. Well, that one certainly is frozen as well. So. One of the things that's happened here, in addition to this reel uh, having a broken post, is that the, uh, the spool is frozen in place. You can't, you can't move the handle without moving this. Well, we're going to see what we can do here. This is interesting. We're going to take the handle off. Sometimes you can push these whole assemblies through. The handle will come off. You can see the... There's a whole host of issues there. I'm going to pull this adjuster cap. When I take my pieces and parts off, they go on a parts tray. Well, let's see if we can get this off this tensioner. Just to make sure that that's not needed. We are getting some spacing here. So, in all likelihood, there's a bridge that's holding this on with the three of these. And because this reel is in such, such rough shape, well, it doesn't hurt to go ahead and see what we can see by removing these. One of the things I do want to encourage you to do is take pictures as you do a disassembly. That way when you, uh, you go to reinstall, you'll uh, have a reference point in terms of what came out, when it came out, what the orientations of it were, and so on. With these three plate screws off, I can't imagine anything holding this side plate on anymore. There we go. All right. So more rust and corrosion. 
Here's your inside look. Your inside look has a gear. And then this is why you can't get the spool out, is we have a frozen um, gear onto the stud of the spool. So what we don't have, we don't have a plate in here that's that's broken, but what we have is a worn bushing. That's why you'll see all that movement here. And uh, I don't think there's anything you can do with it at this point. All right. Uh, what, we, what we're learning here is that it's a lot of um, lack of maintenance. There's probably was an issue in here at some point regarding um, this thing either falling into water or just not being maintained very well. And it's taken its toll on this reel. But we're going to try and clean this up as best we can. A lot of what you do about reel repair is nothing more than cleaning, examining the pieces and parts, getting rid of the old greases and oils, replacing any defective parts. In this case, we're not going to be able to replace that bushing. And uh, just getting it going again, reassembly. So let's do that. We're going to start by using a penetrating oil. It's done a nice job of pretty much getting rid of most of that old uh, rust in there. We'll do the same thing on the other side. And you can see this is, this is why you're getting that uh, movement in the reel itself. You've got those two broken studs on this side and uh, those are rusted in place. We can do the same thing here. We'll use the penetrating oil. Today I'm using WD-40. Tomorrow it might be something else. I don't have a preference for fishing reel uh, pen or for penetrating oils or as I was going to say probably fishing reels, greases and oils. I have no preference. I think they're uh, all designed very well, manufactured well. And I don't think, uh, for the purposes of cleaning and just getting rid of some of the old dirts and oils and the like, uh, any one of them will work fine. The shame of that reel there with the broken posts and with the uh, bad bushing is that uh, it will not perform as it was designed. So I'll call this one a shelf sitter. And I think uh, Scott probably didn't pay much for this reel, I can't imagine with the uh, broken pieces of parts. He's getting very good at identifying uh, pieces that uh, shouldn't, uh, that he shouldn't pay much for. And I'm wondering what this piece is here now. That's probably, probably an anchor for something. It's hard to say. I'm wondering if at one point, I don't know, uh, this is a good place to, to check. This, well, that's the main gear that's rusted in. Okay. So we probably have a point. Yes, we have a point on the main gear here. That's, that's going to seat in here. That main gear will sit in the assembly like that. It's uh, sort of like basic mechanics. If you understand a little bit about what you're looking at, you can usually solve for the bigger issue. The bigger issue in this one, obviously, is some broken pieces and parts. I guess if you wanted to try and get that spool off, you probably could. Uh, you would probably use some heat, apply some penetrating oil and some heat, try to work this up and out. But again, with that broken, uh, the broken lever and the uh, broken crossbars and some of the other things, probably doesn't make a lot of sense to do much more to this reel. Let's see if we can't. Yeah, no, we're not going anywhere with that. All right, let's uh, just do a basic reassembly of this. Check your teeth on the gear. They're actually in good condition. The rust is superficial. You could uh, take a wire brush, brush it down. And uh, make sure it's clean. Same thing with the back here. It's unfortunate that the bushing is shot. A little bit of grease for what is going to ride in the case. Grease the teeth. So reels are simply a big gear, drives a little gear, that drives a spool or a rotor to collect the line. And this is the reel in its simplest form. A big gear drives the little gear, turns the spool to collect the line. Pretty straightforward design and manufacture. But that doesn't mean they need to be 
uh, thought of as just little toys or something. These things actually can get quite intricate. And for the time, I'm sure, this reel was a very nice example of a, uh, a well-made reel back in the 30s. I'm going to put the date on the 30s, and maybe earlier, maybe later. I'm not quite sure. All right, we have the little case that goes on next. We can align those three screw holes and put the screws in. That's going to hold the foundation for this reel. And I'll bet you we get a little bit of improved performance. But the, the problem is going to be that the, there's a lack of uh, strength in the reel because of that floating main gear. And the, the spool gear on the spool is not going to be a particular issue, except that, uh, well, it will always drive the handle, but it was supposed to always drive the handle in this design. These are direct drive reels. Sometimes they're referred to as knuckle busters. Uh, the direct drive reels do not have a drag system, and most of them do not have a free spool release of the er when they're on the earlier models. The later models, they started to engineer those. Um, Scott had actually sent me one that's uh, unrepairable. He sent me a uh, Fluger Autoplay that. Um, well, they had a free spool feature for that. But we know the spool adjuster wasn't doing anything, so we'll put that spool adjuster back on. You can just take this, a little bit of more spray on that side there. We'll clean up whatever surface rust is on there. And this is a good time to tell you if you have any questions about this reel or any reel. Maybe you own an old reel and you want to know a little bit more about them. But to the extent that I can help you, I'll try to do that. Somebody just wrote in a question the other day on a Fluger, uh, not a Fluger, a Pinnacle reel, trying to find parts for it. And unfortunately, I had to tell them that you couldn't find parts for that reel when it was new, no less uh, since the company's been out of business, which is probably about 15 or 20 years now. Okay, that click mechanism there is frozen in place. You could fix this click mechanism if you could unfree the frozen uh, click tongue but that, that click tongue is frozen in place, that won't operate. What you would do is you would move this over and you could bend that back gently with a pliers to complete the ring and allow it to click again. Again, for the purposes of this reel, this is really an education, just learning a little bit more about it. And there's not much we can do with it other than kind of close it up at this point. That's a good place to uh, kind of align things. Put the first one in. And then you can work your way around. First one's always the hard one to get started because you need hand strength and you need a little hand coordination to kind of tighten that screw while you're trying to clamp down with everything else. And what I like to do on these is I like to go high low, kind of north south, then I like to go east west. And again, this is this would prevent you from fishing this reel as well, that broken reel stand. But uh, we learned a little bit about it. Two gear system, direct drive, no drags, 1930-ish, maybe 20s, I don't know. I, I'm going to have to go back and do a little bit more look. I know Ocean City came into play around 1922, I think. And uh, they did form a partnership with Montague, but I'm not sure when that was. So these could have been competitors that became um, one and the same, same company. Earlier or later, I'm pretty sure Montague was not making reels after World War II, but again, if they were, they may have been under the Ocean City brand. But we'll see. All right. We're not going to see much. We'll see the reel turn. That's about it. But. Uh, because of that missing bushing, it won't turn smooth. Better. We could have used heat on that uh, gear, try to separate that gear from the spool. But again, with the broken drive, kind of hard to do anything. But those of you that are tool and die makers probably could have done two things here to restore the reel. The first would have been to 
build a bushing for that case. And uh, the second thing would have been to extract the broken and rusted screws out of that real seat and replace them. But I don't, I, I don't have the ability to do that. And that cap just gets screwed on. And this is a lesson learned. So the, the real world and actually, <laughs> actually turns pretty smooth. It's kind of interesting. There is, there is the grind. And the grind is occurring because of the wobble in the, uh, the, the bushing or the missing bushing. But interestingly enough, it does turn. So there you go. So this is a Montague favorite. It's not a favorite of mine in the condition that it's in. Again, missing some, uh, some screws that have broken off, which is the main injury to this reel. Broken bushing. But otherwise, you know, if you wanted to, you could put string on this and take it out. Probably would risk ripping this off the frame with any big strike. But uh, if you wanted a couple of laughs, I guess you could do that. So. I hope uh, we've all learned a lesson from this. One of them is to examine the reels when you're shopping for them at a flea market. Make sure you note the issues like the broken uh, uh, pushing, the broken screws on the side plate. Don't, put, don't overpay for the reel. But if you want an education, it's always fun to uh, buy something like this. Take it apart and see what makes it go. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that. To our first responders and essential personnel, thank you for all it is that you do to keep us safe. Your efforts truly are appreciated. To everyone, uh, enjoy the art of reel repair. If you like learning about fishing reels, get started by doing something like this. Go buy flea market, garage sale, yard sale type uh, rod, rods and reels. Uh, work on working on them. Uh, take them apart. Hang them up. See if you can't restore them. Learn from them. See the designs. Know, start to learn what you like and don't like about the reels. And uh, that'll help influence any future purchases that you make. To everyone, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.